Here we're told about a signal z that's made up of the sum of two other signals, x and y. And these signals look very similar. In fact, they're, um, they're symmetric. And the question is about finding z in the frequency domain. So immediately, when we see that, we know a Fourier transform is involved. So let's see if we can find that signal here. So first of all, let's recreate the composite signal z of t. And it might help if we try to visualize or sketch the signal first. So what does x of t look like? So x of t is a decaying exponential. It's a one-sided decaying exponential that starts at 39. So it would be something like that, where that value is 39. That's t. And for negative time, it's 0, because we're multiplying by a unit step. Now, if we look at y of t, slightly less obvious, but what we're doing is we're multiplying by a reversed unit step. So that means it's going to be 1 for negative time and 0 for positive time. And it's 2 to the power t, so it'll, it'll be the reverse of that. So we're actually going to have something that looks like that. And again, for positive t, it's 0. So when you add the two, so remember what we have is the sum, x and y together, our signal will look something like that. And if you look at that, another way of expressing that is, as such, we can write that as 39 times e to the power minus 2 absolute value of t. Because you have the minus 2t here and you have the 2t there. So it's as if we're taking the absolute value of t. So now, rather than having a composite signal with two components, x and y, we can now look up in our table this two-sided exponential. And there it is. So identifying here that a is equal to 2, we can say our inverse Fourier transform is that, and we can simply write that out. So we can say z of omega is equal to 2 times a, that's 4, over 2 squared, 4 plus omega squared. So that's our answer, except we are told that omega equals 7. So we can replace omega here with 7. So we can say z of 7 equals 4 over 4 plus 7 squared. So that's 4 over 53. And you can calculate that. And that is your final answer. So for questions like this, when the signal you're looking for isn't immediately obvious, you could, you could have taken each of these signals and um, used versions of that. But by adding these two together, you can save time by simply using that there. So a little bit of um, a little bit of a quick sketch can save you some time and there you have your final answer.